What's up everybody? It's Seth from Fun Is Gaming. I'm here today with another video with some tips for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Today I'm going to bring you five tips for early game combat and making sure you were prepared for these boss battles in the early stages of the game. And particularly I'm thinking like chapters one through three. Uh, and so that's realistically probably like 20 hours or so into the game, maybe even more, depending on how much side content you do. But I am not talking about spoilers from the story. I am not going to talk about uh, in-game stuff, partly because I'm not there yet. So um, I'm enjoying the game um, and taking my time with it. But I want to share these tips for any newcomers or people who maybe are struggling with the combat in this game. The combat is really deep. There are a lot of systems and they are interwoven. They kind of stack on top of one another. And so I wanna share these tips to help you out and hopefully make life a little bit easier for you. So let's get started with our first tip. Tip number one, learn and level new classes. As you go through the game, you will find heroes. Every time you get a new hero, that hero is going to bring a new class. Now they will be assigned a particular character at the very beginning. Uh, and so, uh, again, I'm not gonna get too much into spoilers and who's assigned to whom, but uh, as your characters are assigned these things, you want to, to switch your class. You'll come into your, your class menu and you'll select the new class on whoever it's assigned to. When you have that class being used in your party, other members of your party can learn it. And so it takes time and that rate uh, varies depending on the character, but that is how you do it. And you're gonna want to. You're gonna wanna learn new classes and you're gonna wanna level new classes because as you level new classes, you're able to unlock master arts. Uh, and that's going to be huge as you take advantage of uh, the fusion art system, which we'll talk about in a little while. Uh, it's also gonna be really helpful for um, a number of other things. Uh, you also, as you level them up, you unlock their outfit for that class, which is really cool if you're into cosmetics. So uh, that's for another video though. So that's our first tip, learn and level new classes. So. You're gonna want to do that. Let's go on to our second tip, tip number two. And we're gonna stay here in our party composition uh, class selection menu. You can see here up at the top of the screen, I currently have two attackers, two defenders, and three healers with my third healer being a hero. Uh, I really like the balanced composition of two, two, and two with kind of a third flex or auxiliary character. I don't always use the hero as that flex, uh, but I have found that to be pretty helpful. Um, oftentimes I will have kind of that flex be whatever new class I just unlocked. That way I can learn it on my other characters a little more quickly. I found that to be pretty helpful, but you don't have to do that, but I found that to be pretty successful. There are two things that you want to keep in mind as you are also building your party. Uh, don't neglect these. So you wanna have a balanced sort of MMO style um, party composition, ideally. However, if you're if you're farming for mats or whatever, you know, you could have four attackers, uh, you know, or whatever you want. Do one tank, one healer, and you have at it. Um, but if you get a lot of ads or you run into a difficult boss uh, or enemy, you might find yourself in trouble. So be cautious with that. But two things to be mindful of. One, make sure that you do not set both of your healers or both of your defenders as the two members who make the Ouroboros pair. So for example, if I have two healers in my party and they are Noah and Mio, that is a bad plan because if I'm not controlling them or even if I am and I go Ouroboros, I've now lost access to all of my healers. Likewise, if they're both defenders and I go Ouroboros form, I've lost access to both of my defenders and now uh, things could get pretty crazy with aggro. And so be mindful of that. I would really urge against that um, and, and kind of spread it out a little bit. 
it can be tough to balance all these things though. Second thing to keep in mind with your party composition is to be mindful of your combos. And so uh, you don't want to take someone out of your party and, and lose access to starting your combo. So like at the very beginning of the game, your, your sword fighter, which is Noah's starting class, is the only way that you can use break for a little while. And so you're gonna wanna have break. So be mindful of that as you work on your party composition. Uh, tip number three is actually gonna be related to our combo skills. Okay, and so let me share with you uh, these combos. So you have two main combos here. Break, topple, daze, burst. Break, topple, launch, smash. And uh, I won't cover exactly what each of these things is, is capable of doing, but you're gonna really want to uh, be familiar with that and you'll get used to it as you play through the game, I think. But topple and, and launch are especially really uh, nice, uh, immobilizing the enemy, completely kind of incapacitating them for a short time. Um, and so you're gonna wanna make sure you have all of these or at least one of the combos available within your party. Uh, at the very start, you're probably just going to have break and topple for a little while. Uh, maybe break, topple, and launch, um, or break, topple, and days, um, depending on your makeup. But you're going to want to have access to these combos because being able to initiate the combos and carry them through is going to be really crucial to making your way through some of the boss battles. Also, topple and launch in particular are excellent. Uh, kind of states to have the enemy in, especially a boss, when you initiate your chain attack. You'll just see huge numbers uh, if you're able to pull that off. So again, those are your uh, combo arts there. And that's gonna take us to tip number four, which is, I think, the most complicated of our tips. We're gonna talk about fusion and master arts. So again, I'm on Sword Fighter, which is Noah's starting class here. You see over on the right side of the screen, I've got my my arts. And then over on the left side, I've got my master arts. So your arts here, uh, let me move my camera over to this side here. You can see that they're on a time recharge. So uh, Sword Fighter is a Kevis class, so they're all on a time recharge. The master arts, which are to the left here, are all gonna be from your Agnes classes. So you're going to get more options the more Agnes classes you level up. Um, and this will change. So if I switched to an Agnes class, then these Master Arts would be Kevis Master Arts. Uh, and so the more classes that you have leveled up, the more options you're going to have. And that's really going to be able to advance combat in some really unique and exciting and interesting ways. When your art and your Master Art are charged simultaneously, you will be able to unleash a fusion attack. And so that will combine the effects of those two attacks. So if I do uh, RZ and X, that will also use the one that's assigned to RZ and up. And so it will use both of those at the same time. Uh, and so you can mix and match different things. If you want to have a really powerful attack, you can do it that way. Or if you want to have an attack and a buff or an attack and a heal or an attack and a debuff or whatever you want. Um, for my healers, I really enjoy having a double group heal. So you'll see rank splitter uh, heals nearby allies and then uh, multi-blast also does the same thing. So when I use that fusion art, I get kind of a double group heal, which is really nice. Um, another thing to think about is looking at your recharge gauge on these. So you can see the recharge gauge here is eight auto attacks. And over here, it's a 30 second recharge. Ideally, you want to get these pretty close to one another so that you can use the fusion attack really regularly um, and that they're being charged at the same time and the same rate. These do not charge at the same rate. So I'm not taking my own advice there, but I like the ability to have that double group heal uh, a little bit more than having those coincide. So mix and match and see kind of what you like best and what you need uh, and pick what works best for you. And then uh, also with this one final thing is if you need to use the master art without being able to have the fusion art. So these aren't charged, but your master arts on the left side here are, you can hold RZ and then the, num the uh, button on the D-pad, so up, right, or down, and it will use 
that particular skill, even if you're not using the fusion chart or fusion fusion art. So that can be really, really helpful uh, if you need to. I find it really helpful, particularly with uh, completing those combos. Okay, and so that's gonna be it for our uh, fourth tip. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to our fifth tip. And this is going to be using Ouroboros form. So your Ouroboros uh, forms, they have arts just like you do. They have skills just like you do. They, they also have this soul tree where you can unlock, you can spend SP uh, to unlock these different things. I think the heat gauge ones and art canceling are really clutch. Um, you also have the raisability ones, which seem to be pretty nice uh, and so forth. And so you can really upgrade your Ouroboros form and make that a huge asset in combat. And since you're upgrading this, use your Ouroboros form. It does take a while to charge, uh, but Interlink 3 is especially awesome. And uh, you want to try to level it up to Interlink 3 through using uh, fusion arts and things uh, to unleash kind of the maximum damage and the maximum capability of that Ouroboros form but use your Ouroboros form. They really can change the tide of battle. They can be a huge asset. And so make sure you're using those if you're not. And these are just five tips that I wanted to share with you guys. These are not comprehensive. There's tons more. Uh, I may make some more videos diving into some of these things in particular, sharing fusion arts that I think are really uh, helpful or whatever else. Uh, but let me know in the comments below which of these tips you found helpful. What did you learn? What tips do you have for me? What tips do you have for uh, others? Share those in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care.